Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. A self-reflective rag, retrieval augmented generation that can retrieve, that can generate, but also can critique its own responses using self-reflection. This is a very new paper that just dropped and this is called self rag and the authors of the paper went ahead and also built a system. How do you implement a self rag? So this is not your typical retrieval augmented generation. Rather, this is one step further to implement a large language model to make re retrieval tokens and reflection tokens to give when do you want to retrieve and to also make these critiques. A very interesting paper to be really honest and uh, I think RAG is something that everybody is moving towards because large language models hallucinate, large language models do not have the latest data. So RAG is a very critical component of any business if you have got like knowledge base and a lot of other documents. And this paper dropped in at a very right time where people are exploring different options about how to improve your RAG quality and that's where a lot of different concepts come in and self RAG is definitely something that uh, a lot of people would have tried but uh, at, the, at the end of the day this is a paper that is available and uh, they have built a system and we are going to go through every single detail on this paper. Let's get started. First of all this paper self rag learning to retrieve generate and critique through self reflections is from University of Washington IBM AI research Allen Institute of AI. And when you see this paper, like just like the very first thing they're showing you a comparison between the regular normal rag and uh, the self reflective retrieval augmented generation, which is self rag. If you're not familiar with rag, do not worry. We are just quickly going to see anytime you go to a large language model and you ask a question, you typically, what would you ask? You would ask, can you write an naysay about Elon Musk or can you write a joke about Elon Musk? This is something that I ask all the time. I don't use the joke anywhere, but just I ask this question. If you ask this question to a large language model, the large language model can answer anything. A joke about Elon Musk doesn't have to be factually correct. But when you ask a question about something that is to be factually correct, that is where you say the language model hallucinates when it generates factually incorrect responses. So we can say hallucination is almost equivalent to factually incorrect responses. You cannot deploy a model in an enterprise setup where you can generate factually incorrect responses. So it becomes business critical for you to have factually correct responses all the time. And how do you make sure you have factually correct responses the latest up to date data when you have a large language model because models when they're trained their data is frozen in time and that is where rag ritual augmented generation plays a role so for example you go and ask a question how did u.s states get their names so the first step is retrieve k documents so you you have got like a bunch of pdfs documents text files blah 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 whatever the format is so you have got like bunch of these documents so your RAG solution after seeing this question from the large language model is going to first get a bunch of documents like K documents. Say, let's say the K value is three here. So the three documents come Oh, of the 50 states, 11 are named after an individual person. Popular names by states in Texas, Emma is a popular baby name. California was named after a fictional island in a Spanish book. So these are the three documents it has retrieved that is similar to the question that has been asked and how did it retrieve there could be a lot of nuances that is where you know we use embedding models we use cosine similarity different kind of similarity we use re-ranker we have a lot of different nuances about how do you retrieve this k document and how do you have them ranked that is a different topic once you have the k documents now what you do is you augment this you take this document and you augment this along with your prompt. So how does the prompt go? It goes like this. How did the US states get their name? And then you give the answer to the LM like this, and then you finally generate the output. So you say, okay, and um, uh, US states got their names from a variety of sources. 11 states are named after an individual person. California was named after Christopher Columbus. Some states including Texas and Utah are named after something something. So now what you see is you see that it is not really 100% accurate as you can see in this case that it says that California was named after Christopher Columbus. I don't know who was California named after but um, anyways so you can see this um, information. 
So this is what has been happening in the industry. You have like a lot of libraries like Llama Index, people use Langchain, people use a bunch of vector DBs, primarily for RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. Now what they are proposing is a different solution altogether. It's a self-reflective retrieval augmented generation. And self-reflection, the moment you say, you would probably think, maybe it is chain of thought, maybe it is like tree of thoughts, maybe you generate a response, ask the LLM to go over it and then see. But they go much, much, much further. That's why I was quite interested in this paper and decided to make this video. First, you ask the question, how did US states get their name? First of all, the first step is retrieve on demand. So it knows that, okay, you have to retrieve at this point and it goes on to the external sources it has got and starts retrieving. And when it retrieves, it also has like a critique that says, okay, this is relevant, this is irrelevant, and this is relevant. And that critique outputs the selected best segment. So critique would say that, okay, no, do, do not use the second one. Just use the first one and just use the second, third one. So it uses the first one and you use the third one, like even if it is like partially okay, and it completely like ignores the second one. So it goes through this process and it finally gives you the response. US states got their names from a variety of sources. 11 out of 50 states name come from persons. 26 states are named after native Americans, including Utah. So now you can see how it differs in that approach. And now it is easier said than done. I mean, anybody can say this, right? Like I can say this, you can say this, but where this paper actually shines is the kind of details that they go into uh, describing how they have this approach. And we have already seen like the problem with factual inaccuracies um, is RAG the best solution. And what they are talking about self RAG, self reflective augmented generation, self RAG is a new framework Primarily, it is try, It is supposed to improve the quality of responses and it is supposed to improve the factuality of responses through two things. One is retrieval, the second one is self-reflection. How are they doing it? The framework that they are launching, it uh, actually trains a single large language model that adaptively retrieves passages on demand. What does adaptively retrieves mean? When it knows that it has to retrieve, it does the retrieval job. When it knows that it doesn't have to retrieve, it wouldn't do the retrieval job. For example, you go and ask a question, write a joke about Elon Musk. It doesn't require any retrieval there. But now you go and ask a question, what are the companies Elon Musk started? Now this is a task where retrieval is required. So it, it does that retrieval on demand. It retrieves passages on demand and sometimes completely skip the retrieval also then generates and reflects on the retrieved passages and its own generations generations using a special token called reflection token. So they've got a special token reflection token like, like the one that you saw here. And uh, that tells them that what is the quality of the retrieval, how relevant it is. And uh, this is all, you know, uh, like trained, pre-trained and uh, the reflection tokens, generating reflection tokens make the LM large language model more controllable during the inference stage. Now you can set thresholds like what do you want to accept, what do you don't want to accept. For example, here you said like, okay, should I keep the orange one there partially? Okay, not. So it gives you that ability. So, and uh, now you would ask like, okay, fine. Like I go through all these pain and what is the advantage of this? The advantage of this is um, they have said that based on their result, this model, the self RAG model outperforms chat GPT with RAG and the Llama 2 with RAG. So it outperforms the best open source model. It outperforms the chat GPT, which is GPT 3.5 turbo, the cheapest open AI model, also like probably the most efficient open AI model. And you can see here that uh, the retrieved chat GPT is here. Like the score is here. You can see here 40, 39, 79, and uh, in uh, in long form tasks, it does it does better. But if you actually see in the short form tasks in the closed test task, closed set tasks, you can see the self rag their seven billion parameter model um, like completely outperforms Llama two, completely outperforms Alpaca um, th Llama two thirteen billion parameter model, Alpaca thirteen billion parameter model, and you can see their scores are really good. Like. Um, and you would see like a consistent performance across tasks, like the short form close set tasks. And um, only in certain other cases, you would see like uh, the, the retrieved chat GPT doing good here, but in most other cases, like they are doing good. And this is an open source model. 
So now why should you care about it? You should care about this approach if um, you have tried drag and you still find a lot of holes in there and it doesn't work very well for you. The second is, let's say you want to deploy it in an enterprise setup where people actually care about factuality, then you should definitely care about it. And uh, I'm going to just very quickly go over the details, how they managed to implement it. I don't want to spend a lot of time in discussing this and uh, then we'll move into the model uh, section and just quickly glance through the code. So the self rag works completely fine through self reflection tokens. So the model, when it has been trained, it has been trained with self reflection tokens. So at every point, there are three things that can happen. One, it can retrieve. Two, it can generate. Three, it can critique. So self rag first decodes a retrieval token to evaluate the utility of retrieval and control a retrieval component. That means if retrieval is required, it can actually say retrieval is required and it can go make a call. For example, here you can see that it knows that retrieval is required here. So it says, okay, create that retrieval token. And that's exactly what is happening here. The retrieval token would indicate whether the retrieval is required, whether an external DB should be called or not. Now there is a generate part, which is like the large language model has to generate. If retrieval is not required, then it just like goes on to predict the next uh, word output. And if retrieval is needed, the model first generates a critique token. So like the token that we have here, the critique token, what the critique token does is it, uh, it, it actually checks if the passage or whatever that, uh, that has been generated is, uh, is relevant to this entire conversation. So if retrieval is required, the model further evaluates if passages support generation. Finally, a new critique token evaluates the overall utility of the responses. That's where the self reflection concept happens. So retrieval is very straightforward. Generation is quite straightforward, but while the generation is happening, while the retrieval is required, it also generates a critique token, which in turn critiques the responses that are generated and self reflects to say that, okay, this is the output that you should give. This is the output that you should not give. If you see this particular table, you can see that there are, these are the different types of reflection tokens. The first one is a retrieval token. And then the last three, or uh, reflect, uh, sorry, or the critic tokens, the like like this one. The first one is like the retrieval, the other one is a, like reflective or the critic token. So what it says, it says one, okay, it's relevant, irrelevant, fully supported, partially supported, no supported, and it gives like a usefulness of the response uh, a score. So relevant is like the best, fully supported is like the best, and the five is like the best score. And based on that, you get this ability to control what should come out, what should not come out during the inference stage, because you can basically, uh, control this. They again go into the details about how they train this. This has got like three models. Self rag is a, it's a combination of three models. And I think time and time again, we have been seeing this, right? It's, it's, it's not going to be like a one, um, single monolithic architecture that is going to power uh, the modern AI system. It's always going to be like a bunch of systems put together. This is another great example. So it's going to be three models, a retriever, critic, and generator model. The trains, the critic model uh, self rag trains the critic model augments the diverse input output uh, data with the retrieved passages by the retriever so retriever gets it then trains the critic and uh, uh, with the reflection tokens train the generator lm using like the generator lm is just normally trained like any large language model just to do the next word prediction and um, you know uh, using also the uh, tokens the special tokens that they are introducing there are some advantages that they've spoken about what uh, you get during the inference stage. I think one is like the adaptive retrieval all the time. You don't have to go retrieve. You just make sure that when do you want retrieval because of retrieval token and the tree decoding with critic tokens. Um, basically you can say that, okay, the critic tokens will help you control how the final response should be there. And they have got like a bunch of examples to say that why this is better than like solutions like RLHF, which, um, which like, which happens at the end and you don't have a lot of control. Uh, while uh, self rag enables the behavior by simply adjusting weight rewards, um, multiple preferences, like, you know, everybody can have their own preferences, uh, instead of like freezing the model in itself. I kind of, uh, liked how the details that they've gone into it, but, uh, the main, uh, good thing about this entire thing is they've got the model release. Self rag has released two models. Um, if I'm right, so, yeah, 7 billion parameter model and the 13 billion parameter model. Both the models have been released along with the training data. Both the models are available on Hugging Faces Model Hub and it comes with MIT license. That's, that's, I really appreciate them for uh, having it in MIT license, which anybody can now use it. 
now you can go see how you can use it like for example you have like a retrieval token here and um, how to use it like I, i'll probably make a separate video about using this model and then see how this model does but while you see this code you might be wondering hey um, if i were to do rag i just need an external database like what is a code like this that is without external database and that's exactly what they're doing in their github repository you can go to their github repository and see every single step that is required for you to create your own self rag so you can go install the model you can just like if you just want to do simple inference you can do it but if you want to like train your own model they tell you how to use contriver um, as their retrieval component to actually get the data create the embeddings create the uh, you know um, the the data for the retrieval proper uh, purpose and how to go with the training how to create the critic data so they go over every single detail i think it's super amazing to the amount of details that they have gone into like i can truly respect their work for the amount of details that they have gone into but i think overall this is quite amazing this is self rag where uh, the the model does learn it knows to retrieve generate and also critic itself through self reflection and if there is one thing that you need to care about why you should use this model the model actually experiment shows that self rag 7 billion and 13 billion outperforms state of the art large language models and uh, rag models chat gpt and also retrieve uh, rag enabled llm uh, large language models like uh, llama 2 and alpaca we saw on a bunch of tasks um, i think this is great uh, irrespective of what the result is i am still like, quite skeptical how this would uh, be efficient i know they have, they have spoken about like efficiency but efficient in a, like a production setup because that's where rag is useful not for hobbies but more around for people who are actually going to use the model every day i would definitely love to know more about it and uh, let me know in the comment section what do you think about it see you in another video happy prompting